Welcome, welcome, welcome to the match preview. Today we'll be discussing the Palace away game at Anfield to Liverpool. Um, remember, please, if you're um, watching, to like and subscribe. If you are listening, download the pod, leave us a thumbs up, five star rating. I'm joined today by Nick and Luke. Luke, first time meeting you. Nice to meet you, Luke. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Nice to meet you. Good as well. I'm good. I'm feeling positive. So, yeah, Great. we'll see. <laughs> and Nick, my friend, how are you today? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I've had a heavy weekend. Um, I missed the Man City game because I've been getting neuropathy in my feet, which means I can't walk about for much. So, Man City was either... Um, Go to the game, game, or go to a gig in the evening. And I went to a gig in the evening, and I haven't been able to walk since. So it's oh, unlike okay. me to miss a match, but it's you know that's how bad it's getting. Plus, I thought we'd lose about six nil. It's funny you said that about not being able to walk. I am um, on Sunday. I played golf in the morning, and I played football in the, in the evening. And then Monday, I couldn't walk at all. Damn. So I know what you mean by not being able to walk. And was it worth Tuesday? Do you find it's worth? Two days after than one day after. No, actually, by Tuesday I was okay, and, and I guess today, as the recording, we are recording this on a Wednesday. I'm actually fine today, so. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Go play football again. Yeah, uh, no, I played golf a little bit today, a little practice. Anyway, um, we had the match reaction pro- after the uh Man City game. If you haven't seen it yet, Nick was on with uh Hambo. Great job by both of you. Um, but I want to get your thoughts on the game, not yours, Nick. You're on, but Luke, what were your thoughts about the Man City match? Um, after the game, I actually felt quite positive. I think a lot more people would have felt more positive as well if uh, Luton didn't get that win later on in the day. I think actually the post-match reaction of Palace was quite good. We scored a couple of goals. We scored early. Yes, we did concede four goals, but it is Man City. But yeah, overall, it felt like you can see positive changes in the way we're playing, see some confidence in a few more players. The signings from January look really good under the new system and hopefully that means we're going to get some points before the end of the season. I can't see us losing all seven. So, you know, more positive than I was a few weeks ago, for sure. Yeah. I have to say, man, I, I watched that game back again. Kevin De Bruyne is on another level as a football player. Yeah. He, was, he was amazing. And to think he didn't play yesterday uh, in the in their Champions League game and they still were able to you know get the draw away because they had, oh, oh, Phil Foden played instead of him. It was it's amazing. Yeah. It really is. So, I know people at the end of that match were upset, like you, like you, Luke. I, I, I thought about it and I said to myself, they're just so good. To get anything out of that game would have been really difficult. They just, they, they, re- that's the reason why they have, they are the trouble winners from last season. So, um, we, just, I used to think that um, Torre was the best ever player I'd ever seen, but I think De Bruyne is is quickly coming to match him, and and to an extent, uh, Foden as well. Watching him on telly, he's he's just incredible at the moment. It's. Uh, it's just really, really scary how good the world club champions are. And they've got like for like in every position. And it's quality like for like. And bringing you through. And hopefully Glasnost seeing some of the younger players both playing for other teams who've all got their own injury problems. But also had a chance to have a better look at some of our players as well to see who could fill in these gaps due to hamstring injuries. Well, at the time of recording, today was the um, the um, open uh, training session at Sellers Park for Palace. Um, saw some some comments on online about it. Apparently, it, w- it was very enjoyable. Um, they didn't really do anything special. It was mostly, you know, one-touch finishing type stuff. But it's nice that the fans got to get there. Um, on an injury note, obviously, um, Michael, Lise, Michael Lise was training today, which was good. I heard about yes. that. I didn't hear anything about Jez Raksaki, but... I know that he was on the same timetable as Olise, so maybe he'll get in on the on the bench this this week. Because again, my understanding was that Olise had the fifty minute kind of uh, thing for last week, and that today will this week will be uh, Jez's time. Obviously, um, Mark Gay he's still not available. So as far as players, we will have Edward back, who was back last week, and Olise. So that's something to look forward to. But on the defensive end, we're going to be struggling. But I want to go to um, news that kicked that broke today from Alex Howe, formerly of Crystal Palace, um, about. John Philippe Mateta. So apparently Glass is very pleased with how he's been doing this season. Everybody who knows, listen to the show knows I'm a massive fan of his, happy with what he's done so far. But apparently been going to be offered a new 10 year, uh, sorry, 10 year, a new two year <laughs> extension on his contract. 
So I'll go to you first, Nick. What are your thoughts on possibly Mateta getting a new contract? I think he deserves it. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who, when he had a dip in form, imagine when the whole team had a dip in form, he, he looked like he couldn't hit a button door with a banjo. Is that the correct phrase? I don't know anyway. Um, <laughs> I was thinking we really, really need a new striker. Okay, we really, really do need a new striker. But Mateta has risen to that challenge. He seems to be lasting a bit longer in games as well. He is excellent when he's got lots of players around him. He just seems to find a way out. God knows how. Um, he's, he's almost Balassi-esque in the way he can get through players. Not without the tricks and whatever, but you, in the way that how the bloody hell did he do that? But he just does. And he doesn't seem particularly quick when he does it. But he is quite quick, if that makes sense. It's just a shame he never made more on Saturday of that uh, dodgy pass back to the Man City keeper that the commentators creamed over for about 15 minutes afterwards. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very, very good uh, to get him on an extra two years. Um, let's just hope that his form doesn't drop because he's got the extra contract. Luke, what are your thoughts on uh, Mateta getting uh, a couple more years on his contract? Uh, I have always been a bit heavy criticism on him in terms of like his goal scoring. I've always thought he's been good at holding the ball up and that. I was looking into it actually a bit before this. He's got a contract at the moment until 2026. So that's a couple more seasons already. Seven goals this season, which is much better. But, you know, it's that's the most he's ever got in the Premier League in a season, you know. We need to see that more consistently. Yes, there's potential there. I'm happy with how he's looking at the moment. Yes, I want him to stay. It's just I don't know if he needs another bumper contract. I think some strikers need to prove themselves a bit longer in terms of goal scoring to get that. But I'm very happy if he stays for sure. I just, you know, when we don't seem to have all the money in the world, I don't want us to, you know, be giving players extra wages after like a season of better performances, if you know what I mean. I definitely understand that. Um, but one thing I, I will bring out, I know that Glasner is a big advocate of a, a bigger, bigger striker. Um, he had obviously Kolo Mawani, who went on to a massive contract or signed him on a free, went, I think went to PSG for like 30, 40 million. Also had Val Reghorst, another kind of tallish striker. So if we were to keep Mateta then, do you think we need to upgrade our second striker? Right now, obviously, it's Edward. What would you guys, what are your thoughts on maybe Edward leaving then instead of Mateta? Luke, you um, yeah, I, he's literally got like a season left after this one, doesn't he? Uh, so if you're going to get the money, you're going to have to sell him now. I asked this question to you guys. Do you see Edward signing a new deal if he's second striker? I personally don't. So if that's the case, we've got to sell him and then get a better second striker in. So then I guess that does leave Mateta as the better one and the number one choice. Took his goal well, though, didn't he, Luke? Uh, the other oh, day, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. 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 Um, see, so my thought was that we uh, lots of Bundesliga clubs were sniffing around after Mateta, according to social media rumors. So, we don't know how true or not they are. Does that extra two years on his contract bump up a potential transfer fee, even if it was to go in the window, or does it not make a difference if it's two years or four years left because it's still just buying them out of the contract, isn't it? I think extra years does help, but I don't think uh, since he does have two more yet, yet, it wouldn't make a difference in this window coming up. It would make more difference, obviously. Because you come to the end of your contract, the less money you're going to get. So it's an interesting point. I just think that um, it would be interesting to see whether this goes again. I don't, I'm not sure how much, uh, if this will actually happen. I'm, you know, I'm a massive fan of his. We definitely need to upgrade in a striker position. I don't know if it will be um, who, who that would be. But I think if I was to choose between Edward and Mateta, based on what I've seen so far from Glasner, I think Ed, uh, Mateta fits the system much better than Edward has. But you're yeah. right, Edward took the goal really well on Saturday, but we need to see more of that. So It's interesting that the German uh, German teams do seem to like Mateta. Glasner Dasner likes him, German clubs want to come in for him. So there must yeah. be something about him for what he did there pre-Palace. Was it Mines we got him from, or was that somebody else we got from Mines? It was Mines, it was Mines, it was Mines, yeah. Yeah, it definitely um, is an interesting one, isn't it? Um, in terms of Mateta, I think if you're comparing him and Edward, Mateta definitely offers the most, and we arguably play a bit more to his strengths as and like a sole striker on his own. You know, Edward's a poacher, 
is that really what we need with Glasner at the moment? It seems like Mateta is the better option. So, yeah, out of the two, I'd definitely be keeping Mateta. Although I do think Edouard is better. If Edouard gets the right balls through, he's a clinical finisher. I'm thinking yeah. of Fulham away last season, just as an example. Um, so he can take the chances if, if given them, but they are different types of players. Um, you were yeah. talking about Patrick, who, who you bring in. We need somebody really nippy in the, in the Andy Johnson mould, I think, uh, although he's very short and you just said Glasner likes to talk to players. But do you know what I mean? Somebody can run in like Watkins or somebody like that. We haven't really got that. I think um, Mateta's a bit too Bambi on ice when he's running, isn't he? Well, people were saying that, but did you see the way he took that first goal? I mean, the way he took that goal against City, there was no Ben Ben Ice about that. But I know I've heard that comment about him in the past. But I just think that um, I agree with you. We probably need a different striker. We, we just need someone that fits Glass' system. Nippy or not, tall or not, whoever it is. Because, again, if you notice how we're playing now, we're trying to get the ball forward a lot quicker, be more direct. And if that means uh, height, if it means speed, whatever it works for Glass' system, I'll take it. So. Uh, moving quickly on, uh, the other 21s played a game on Monday evening at the VBS Stadium. They uh, drew nil nil versus Everton. Um, the reason I bring it up is because um, Sean Gray had returned from his loan um, at Carlisle, not very successful, unfortunately. And Frank A. Uma, who'd been on the first team bench, and actually Ed Mather, we were both were both in the starting lineup. Um, just so just so you guys know, I know that they have that Premier League international cup game is coming up against the same team i believe it's uh monday or tuesday everton so keep eye out for that because it can be interesting to see um just going for the rest of the season if they get knocked out at tournament how many of those younger players get to see more first time first is team that the, training minutes is that the semi-final it is, semi-final. Right. I think it is isn't it, it is. and who's left is it all english teams left this is because we played eindhoven last year didn't we and Eindhoven, who were a sec Eindhoven youth, who were a second division Dutch team, just turned out too strong in extra time, didn't they, with the, with the fitness and whatever. I actually saw the highlights. They actually beat West Ham yesterday 3 2. They were down 2 0 against West Ham and came back. They're, they're going to be very strong to beat again this season. They're very good. So, be interesting. So, let's turn our thoughts to the upcoming fixture Liverpool away. So, I don't know how much you guys know about our uh, time versus Mr. Jurgen Klopp. Um, we have not won versus a Klopp team in 19 matches. We have two draws. Can I just say, um, um, can I just castigate you there for using the word versus? It's against. Sorry. You're a teacher, Patrick. What, Come on, stand what is, what, is, what, does, what does What's versus mean then, as opposed to against? Well, it's all about the different stanzas in poetry. That's what verses are. So why is it whenever I see a fixture, it says Liverpool and it says VS, which is a short version of versus Palace. Why does why would that be? Because why is that correct? Why, why can't I say it? Because if they put AG for against, they might think you're talking about silver. I don't know. So As opposed to AU for gold, right? there, Chemistry teacher joke there. <laughs> no, I don't know. But, but, um, when I used to um, teach PE and so end of the term, little little five-a-side football tournament because there was 30 kids in the class. You could have six teams, mixed teams, boys and girls. And they'd always say, who are we versing next? And that used to wind me up more than anything Well, that, well, that's, well that's totally incorrect. I mean, <laughs> I, I can understand that. But I mean, saying Palace versus Liverpool, I'm not being aesthetic. But again, I, I stand corrected, teacher, current supply <laughs> teacher, extraordinaire. Freelance. As I was saying... As I was saying, <laughs> freelance teacher, you are a freelance teacher. We have not been Jurgen Klopp in 19 attempts. Um, the best we have done are the draws in February 2023, the 0-0, and the 1-1 one -one in August uh, 20, uh, 2022. There's been actually some very, very, very bad matches against Liverpool. Um, our last game, I was at that game December. Um, the 2-1 loss. Uh, Nick, you were at that game, right? Because I remember we spoke about it because we went to the West Ham game before. What are your thoughts on that game as, as you remember the game uh, at home against them? I, it's, I, I really can't remember. The games have just merged into one dross kind of brown mess before Glasner came. 
So All right, so <laughs> maybe my I'll our minds try to wipe it out, but but I'll remind you then. Not too bad. Uh, Mateta penalty, are you sent off? Too late, Liverpool goals. Remember now. Now was it the Mateta? Was that the penalty that Mateta took that Munoz wanted to take because he won it? Not Munoz. Munoz wasn't here yet. Not Munoz. Um, the Brazilian Franca. Franca. No, that was that was against Burnley. All oh, right, Luke. But but Help but me. I remember being uh, I remember being <laughs> in, in the main I remember being in the main stand. He was arguing with someone. I remember he was arguing with someone about the penalty kick. I remember he was, but it wasn't it wasn't um Franca. Someone wanted to take it and. Uh, it would it might have been Edward because Edward was on the pitch at that time. It might have, he was he was talking to someone, but Joe Ward told him to take the kick and he took it and scored it. So but Luke, what do you remember about that game? If anything. Yeah, I actually do remember that a bit. That was such like a head loss game for me at the end. I yeah. couldn't believe what I'd witnessed. I think I did deserve the yellow card, but in that game, Endo did about six of the same fouls, which were literally that's what made it annoying. And then last minute, I think Alison Weldy save. Or a really good save from like an Anderson header, I want to say. Um, and that could have been two all that could have changed yeah. our season a bit. But yeah, one of them ones where we gave it to them very well. But you know, we just ten men, it was never gonna come through, was it? But yeah, positives to take from that, of course, that we drew them close. But yeah, it's not been a good record, like you said, against them for a while, has it? It hasn't. I mean, I mean that's that's the thing. Klopp, Klopp is, I mean, he's leaving, uh, and that's interesting, but you know, they're, they're fighting on, what, two more fronts now. Obviously, they've got the Europa League game as of recording Thursday. They're obviously in, in the in the title race. Nick, what are your thoughts on facing Liverpool at this time? I mean, the only good thing I think of is they do have a game two, three or four days before, but they've got such a strong squad. And I will bring it up now. Uh, watching the press conference this morning, I heard that Diogo Jota is going to be back in the in the squad. So will Allison. So will Bassetich and so will Alexander Arnold. So they're going to be stronger come Sunday. So what are your thoughts about Liverpool just in general? Well, that just means they've got the squad depth, doesn't it? And like Man City can swap like for like because in, in the past we'd say, oh, yeah, they've got a cup game in the week. And now because the squads are so big, they can just pick and choose, can't they? Uh, they're in the middle of a title race. Um, and I think that's going to be their big focus. Because as much as Klopp lauded in the time he's been there, is it eight, nine years now, something like that? It's been quite a while. Right, right. Um, they haven't actually won a lot, have they? What do you mean? Well, what what compared to other teams like, like Man City? He's actually won everything except for the Europa League. He's won the Premier League, How FA many Cup, times? League Cup. He won the champion. He won the he won the Premier League one year during COVID. He's won yeah. the FA Cup. He's won the League Cup at least twice. He's won the Champions League once. And I could just say he hasn't. He's, one thing he hasn't won, he's not won the Europa League yet. So that's what people say he's focused on the on Europa League because they haven't mm. won that yet. But he's, won, he's actually won, much like Pep, basically everything since he's been there. But not at the volume with the Premier League and whatever. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying he's not won nothing, but... There's if, only one if Pep one. You right. If you're putting him <laughs> up against top, top managers... <laughs> I won't pluralize your Alex Ferguson. He's, he'd he'd be copies. second. He'd be second on your list if you had top top managers. You'd have you'd have Pep, and you'd have who else next? You'd have Jurgen. You have Jurgen Klopp, no? Yeah, but you're I mean, talking about present day. What? Where would Alex Ferguson come in with that? No, 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 no. I'm talking about present day. I don't want to go back to our uh, Brian Clough. <laughs> I mean, I can go back to Brian Clough if you want to. <laughs> Luke speaking. I hope I'm, not, I'm Luke speaking. I'm not. I hope I'm not on with these old gits again. I don't know what they're on about. <laughs> <laughs> I was just ready for the debate to go on for an hour there about them two managers. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I, yeah, I, I, you, you've probably just shown me up there, Patrick. He, he has won quite a bit, but you know, when you compare him to, I was comparing him to Alex Ferguson and and Busby, you know, and he's kind of lauded in those kind of terms. I think when he actually hasn't quite achieved that yet. That's that's my point. Anyway, but yeah. Look, it's it, although Glasner has said if he didn't think he was going to be able to win a game, he might as well go out sightseeing. And there's a lot to see in Liverpool. Um, it's still a free hit. It's I still actually a free wanted, don't, don't say that, don't use that term. I actually want to talk to Luke about that. I was, I found that comment, Luke, very refreshing last week about Glasner and that 
but I want to get your thoughts on it. I, I mean, to have a manager who basically is saying, unlike what Nick just said, it's not a free hit. He's not saying we're definitely going to win, but he's saying we are going out to win. What are your thoughts on just that new, just the new attitude that Glass is bringing towards, not only to the fan base, but obviously to the players? Yeah, I think it's so nice to hear, of course. And then you want them to actually back it up and him not to just be saying it. And that first half against Man City was really, really good in that sense. It was exactly what he said. It wasn't like we sat back, we took the game to them, passed it quick. It wasn't like our players were being told to pass it around a bit. Wharton, when he saw that, he tried to pass it straight away, got Mateta through. We didn't show fear in that first half. And I think it was always going to be hard to keep up that tempo, that pace. But it did show that what Glasner was saying wasn't just a media comment to try and keep us happy. It's actually what he wants to do. And I think all of that together does just make it so refreshing. Just hope he gets that big summer to work it out, get through the season, you know, get these games like Liverpool. And you never know. Liverpool do concede a lot at home this season. Even if it's only one goal a game, they're still conceding. So never know. Give it a go. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, Lineup wise or just changes in general, Nick, do you think that there's a possibility that I mean obviously we all know that we are still very limited squad wise again as the as of recording, we don't know if there's anybody else coming back into the squad. I don't think that Richard, for instance, is, is gonna be ready. He'd be the only one besides Raksak who might come into the squad. I don't think anyone else is there. But what do you think, if anything, he should try and change for Liverpool away? I think he should start at least saying not his name. Way ever performs, let's let's send a message to him and say, Sorry, son, you weren't good enough the other day. Um, other players performed, you didn't. Um, and if you want to get back in this team, you need to start performing and you can watch them perform and then go on and copy what they're doing. It's a massive shout, that is. But before I get Luke, I saw Luke's eyes got a lot of when you said that. <laughs> We all know, we've all seen it. Eze and Lise together are much better than one without the other, even though Lise can play without Eze. Luke, what are your thoughts on Nick's outrageous statement that we should uh, <laughs> not play Eze on Sunday? I think, like, I want to explain before I say first, but obviously that City game was not good. I did think the moment he had the ball, City players, three of them were on him. Never going to be good for a player like Eze who does need a bit more time than a Lise who kind of can react quickly. Bournemouth again, I think as a controlled the ball too much, took too much time on the ball, so it hasn't been good them last two games. However, my issue is actually more of IU at the moment. I think I'd want as a you can't drop as a in terms of attacking ability. And in my opinion, IU hasn't been doing the defensive work as much lately, as well as he has in the past. I think the second goal City got, Akanji was allowed to run for 20 yards, basically, from left back, and IU was kind of jogging back. I thought the Forest goal, again, it came from that. The player, Gibbs White, is just able to kind of run a little bit and it's kind of Ayu's man. And I don't know. I think Ayu hasn't been as great under Glasner as he has before. And for me, I'd definitely be dropping Ayu over Eze any day of the week because I just think Eze can turn it on any minute. Fair point. I want to go back to um the Man City match because... As much as we all know how great of a manager Pep Guardiola is, he 100% targeted our right side. Jack Grealish and Kevin De Bruyne had a field day. Everyone go back and watch the game. I love Daniel Munoz. Well, go back. Every, all four goals were on Munoz's side. He, he, as well as he tried to play, he got beat four times by Grealish or De Bruyne for the goals. So we obviously have limited options in our back three. It's Ward, Lerma, and Anderson. Would you guys think of making any changes to our to our back four plus I wouldn't say go to a back four, sorry, to our back five, meaning would you maybe try Tompkins back there in lieu of Loma put Loma back in midfield? Would you try someone else at right back? I just want to get your feeling on Nick. What are your thoughts on maybe trying something different in our in our in our back five? Would you just keep it the same? Was Rob holding at the training session today? Asking for a friend. No. You know what? <laughs> The last time I saw Rob Holding was last week. And you guys know they had a, a fan fest in America for the uh, for, for the Premier League, and yeah. uh, it was in Nashville, Tennessee. And apparently, um, Rob Holding's a big Nashville music fan, and apparently he was there. So, <laughs> and my last oh. signing of Rob Holding was in Nashville, Tennessee, in America. So I don't think he's playing Saturday. If that's what you are or Sunday. Sorry, but go ahead. 
So he's uh, holding the back line dancing then, if he likes Nashville. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Famous puns. Thank you. There we go. You like that one, Patrick. That was um, actually decent. That wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, can Re Reader Valve fit into this this kind of system or or be named, or is he is he completely out the door now? Do you know also, what? I just, just want to go back to what, what we were saying yeah. about IU and Ezra. Do you remember when Ezra's form had dropped off and then Roy came back and suddenly he was on fire and I was on fire again? Do you, what kindly words do you think Roy was saying to Ezra and I to get the performance out of them that perhaps Glasner's not with a different management uh, style? No, I'll tell you what. Hey, son, we're playing Leicester, Southampton, Leeds. They're all getting relegated. Do your best. That's what he said, said to them uh, last year. Not mm -hmm. you're playing Man City, Liverpool and Bournemouth. So... I'm not having that, Nick. I'm not having this. He got more out of him last year. Last year, the fixtures were not as difficult as these ones. So, but anyway, sorry. Continue. I don't want to get into this whole this Roy comment. I'll get I'll get slandered on 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 this podcast. Sorry. <laughs> so no, I was I was just um wondering about Riedewald because he he hasn't been bad when he's made cameo appearances. I injured, mean, he hasn't, hasn't torn up trees either, but he's, he's injured. He's done his job. He's, He's injured. injured. I mean, I, he he came in from Ajax. He actually played in the back three Ajax. He would have been perfect for this system, I think. But he's been injured, so I haven't heard anything. He's going to be back anytime soon. So unfortunately, he's not even an option. But because he's not appeared uh, on, because I had to look on the uh, transfer market and other sites for for lists of injuries, and he's not actually down there. He's definitely injured. I mean, you're right. No one, no one, no one asks during the presses about Redevolve or holding for some strange reason. It's assumed they're not coming back anytime soon. It's like not. It's like asking about Ferguson, who, by the way, didn't didn't play on Monday. Funny enough, so he might be back in the first team. But the last time I saw about, I mean, I know weird subject to bring up, but Ferguson actually has played the last two under twenty one matches and got through them pretty decently. So he might be back in the. He might be in the first team squad. So not that I'm saying he'll play Sunday. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that he's actually hopefully on the road to recovery. So anyway, so we've spoken about Liverpool. Um, our thoughts on the um. The fixture. We might have to go to predictions. I'll start with you, uh, Luke. What do you think about prediction for Sunday's match? Um, God, that's a hard one. Liverpool off the back of a United draw. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see how they do at Atlanta, but you know they're gunning for the league. They need that win. I'm gonna say, I'm, I really want to be positive. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say two all. I'm just, I'm just feeling something about this Glasgow formation. That first half of City. We can carry it on up, cause an upset. It's got to come soon, don't it, guys? So I'm going to say that. Love that, Nick Nicholas. What about you? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking when Luke said that, I thought there's got to be a moment that it all clicks, hasn't there? Do you know what I mean? It's it, it's just going to really gel and really click. Um, but yeah, I I, I still think it'd be three one Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be it might not be that game. But but as I've said on every show, we always get a shock result in a season. We haven't had one this season, really, have we, against one yeah, of the big have. teams? We've had we've had two. We've had two, both in Manchester, two two in Man City and one nil Man United. As bad as they are, B United at Old Trafford is a big Yeah, but at the time that wasn't a shock result, was it? Because Man United were, were pants at that time. How, right, how, 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 how are they now? Are they better now? <laughs> worse <laughs> they've been bad all season but yeah um, so um, Luke's gone 2-2 two, two, Nick's gone 3-1 Liverpool I'm more in a, uh, as much as I'd like to be um, more positive I would be if we had some defensive help I just have I just have a I just don't think Lerma, Ward and Anderson can handle whether it's Diaz Nunez Jota God forbid Jota again diving in the box for a penalty or <laughs> anywhere else so I'm actually going to go 2-1 Liverpool. I'm going to try and keep the score. We need to keep our goal difference down. I'll go 2-1 Liverpool. And again, like I said, I've got that. The 19 games never beaten Klopp. I can't see us doing it now. It'll be great. And I'm with you, both of you. I'd love to get that upset um, special on Sunday, but I just don't see it. I'm just hoping that once we get past this this last fixture, for me, the hardest one of the of the, of the the run-in, we get to the West Hams and Fulhams of the world, Nick likes that, we'll do a little better. But thank you guys both for joining me today. Again, uh, Luke, do you have anywhere we can we can catch you on our, any kind of socials? Um, just on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, Luke underscore Seisha. Yeah, that's me. Great. 
So for me, Patrick, Nick, and Luke, uh, appreciate everybody uh, for listening. And until next time, up the palace.